Hello everyone, I'm Priyadarshni Mara, faculty at the Department of Buddhist Studies, University of Delhi. Today I'm going to discuss with you paper number 11, Philosophy of Buddhism. This module is titled as Shi, Samadhi and Pragya. These are the three essential or fundamental factors in Buddhism that leads one to the higher goal and that is the goal of enlightenment. So Shil, Samadhi and Pragya, these three together constitutes that path. Shil points out to morality, Samadhi points out to meditation and Pragya points out to wisdom. Before we get into this, let, we, let me start with the Noble Eightfold Path. And here, what I'll draw, do is, I will draw this connection between the Eightfold Path and these three essential characteristics. So in Buddhism, the third noble truth is path that leads to the cessation of suffering. When we talk about the truths in Buddhism, or the noble four noble truths, we see that the first one states that there is suffering, the second one states that there is suffer, cause of suffering, the third one says that there is cessation of suffering, and the fourth one says that there is a path that leads to the cessation of suffering. So therefore, here when we are talking about the path, that leads to the cessation of suffering, which is the fourth noble truth, we are talking about the eightfold path. This eightfold path is known as Arya Ashtangik Mark. That means it is the noble eightfold path. And the constituents of this eightfold path are right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. Therefore, how now our three characteristics of existence or virtuous existence are related to these eight links of noble eightfold path is what I am going to talk here. These are categorized these eightfold paths, these eight characteristics are categorized into Sheel, Samadhi and Pragya. How are they categorized into these three? We see that first two fall under Pragya or Wisdom. Third to fifth fall under Sheel or Morality. And the last two fall under samadhi or concentration. So we see now we are going to study in details shil, samadhi and pragya. Let us begin with shil. Shil paramita means perfection of morality. It is the second paramita or perfection for both Mahayan and Theravad Buddhism. If you remember then we've already talked about paramitas. Paramitas are virtuous actions that are supposed to be performed by either Bodhisattva or an Arhat who is on the path to attain liberation. So now when we talk about paramitas, we see that the Theravadins have given 10 sets of paramitas or virtuous actions. When it comes to Mahayan, we see that early Mahayan or the early Mahayanists talk about only six types of Paramita. However, not getting into the details of Paramita, we are now seeing that Shil is the second Paramita. And it is also sometimes translated as virtue or ethical conduct as well as morality. It also connotes balance and harmony. Teachings about morality permeate Buddhism. When we look at Buddhism, it is about 
moral values about ethical way of life it is about the way of life therefore morality is the focus of right speech right action and right livelihood of the noble eightfold path or arya ashtangik mark right action focuses on the buddhist precepts moral teachings for ordained monks and nuns are found in the vinay pitak it is important to understand that the basis of buddhist morality is not found in any external authority in other words the practice of morality is not found in unquestioning obedience of a list of rules why are we saying this here let us move further and then you'll understand why we talking about talking like this here instead the perfection of morality is the natural expression of wisdom and compassion it cannot be found in any textual source there might be certain rules for you in order to live your life but when it comes to morality it comes from within you with the natural expression of wisdom and compassion wisdom is pragya and compassion is karuna mahayan scholars identified three categories of shil morality as restraint morality as virtue and morality as the selfless activity of compassion we have restraint what is restraint morality as restraint points out control in self from doing anything or performing anything or for, from for that matter even thinking or speaking anything that would be harmful to oneself and even to others second is morality as virtue so performing every good deed or virtuous deed is all, always virtuous then comes morality as the selfless activity of compassion when we talk about karuna or compassion it is equally important in sustaining this morality these categories show us the progression of training from self concern to selfless concern there is a transition from being self concerned to selfless concern why are we using this term selfless concern selfless concern is when you stop thinking only about yourself and when you start caring for people around you when you start thinking and doing for the welfare of the society around you morality as restraint touches on renunciation renunciation is understood to be realizing whatever binds us to ignorance and suffering and then we begin the journey by giving up behaviors that bind us such as lying stealing and so on practicing morality as virtue points out to grounding the practice of morality in mindfulness and meditation we look into the final phase and that is morality of selfless activity of compassion which is an expression of wisdom so we have these three types of moralities and now we see that the five precepts in which shil or morality in buddhism is divided so the first precept is not killing the second precept is not stealing the third precept is not misusing sex the fourth precept is not lying and the fifth precept is not abusing intoxicants these are the precepts of morality or shil and they are not killing not stealing not misusing sex not lying and not abusing intoxicants then we have the 10 grand precepts 
So first we have the five types of common precepts or moralities. Now we move on to ten types of grand morality. Mahayan Buddhists generally follow a list of ten precepts that are found in Mahayan Sutra called the Brahmajal Sutra or Brahmnet Sutra. And it is not to be confused with the Pali Sutra of the same name. So this is Mahayan Sutra called Brahmajal or Brahmanet Sutra. It talks about 10 precepts and these are 10 grand precepts. And that is the 5 normal precepts are included in it. And then we have 5 extra. So the first is not killing. Then we have not stealing. Then we have not misusing sex. Then we have not lying. Then not abusing intoxicants. These are the five precepts and five new, which means not talking about others, errors or faults. Not elevating oneself and blaming others. Not being stingy. Not being angry, not speaking ill of the three treasures. Now, what are these three treasures? When, when we're saying not speaking ill of three treasures, we are pointing out to something called three ratna. And what is that three ratna? It is bud, sang, and dham. These three are called three gems or Three Ratna. Now, the three pure percepts. Some Mahayan Buddhists also vow to uphold the three pure percepts, which are associated with walking the path of Bodhisattva. What are these three? These are to do no evil, to do good, to save all beings. So, we have the three percepts or three categories pure precepts which are associated with walking the path of a bodhisattva and these three are to do no evil to do good to save all beings the 16 bodhisattva precepts you will sometimes hear of the bodhisattva precepts or the 16 bodhisattva vows most of the time this refer to the 10 grand precepts and 3 pure precepts plus the 3 refuge. What are these 3 refuge? They are I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma and I take refuge in the Sangh. When we talk about the Bodhisattva precepts or the 16 Bodhisattva precepts or vows, we see that it constitutes of the 10 grand precepts, 3 pure precepts and 3 refuge. And those 3 refuge are, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma and I take refuge in the Sangha. Now these are the precepts. Now when we talk about the Eightfold Path, we see that to fully understand how the precepts are part of Buddhist path, being with the Four Noble Truths, the fourth truth is that liberation is possible through the Eightfold Path. The precepts are connected to ethical conduct, part of the path, which is right speech, right action and right livelihood. So this is for pragya or morality when we talk about this is for morality. Now we are going to talk about samadhi and after that pragya. So samadhi, coming to samadhi, we see that the definition of samadhi is a Sanskrit word which denotes a state of intense concentration or absorption of consciousness which is induced by complete meditation. This term is used by both the Buddhist and non-Buddhist to describe 
a non dualistic state of consciousness in which the experiences of the subject as well as the object becomes one when we talk about the etymological meaning we see that it is derived from the root sum sum means together or integrated and a means towards and dh means to get or to hold thus the literal meaning can be derived as acquiring integrity or wholeness or truth samadhi means that a person is in ecstasy in bliss tranquility and light the hindus use yoga as a means to achieve samadhi the consciousness is absorbed in the object of meditation in buddhism samadhi is the outcome of development of mind through insight developed from meditation and is attainable by buddhist as well as non buddhist when we talking about meditation or samadhi any person no matter what religion or caste or category or society he or she belongs to one can attain meditation it, in, it is not necessary that you are bounded by the limits of your existence all you need to do is meditate in the right way so as you are meditating in every sphere of life in anything you do in this stage the mind is believed to become still one pointed or concentrated but the person remains conscious at the same time samadhi or concentration of the mind one pointedness of mind is called chittas ek gat and it is the third division of the eightfold path of buddha's teachings which is paya or wisdom shil or conduct and samadhi or concentration it is developed by samant meditation samadhi in buddhism if we see is the concentration of the mind it is the part of noble eightfold path which means right concentration and it is the second of the three paths of buddha's teachings of shil samadhi and paya it was taught by the buddha using 40 different methods of meditation such as mindfulness of breathing and loving kindness upon development of samadhi a person's mind is believed to become pure from defilement calm tranquil and luminous once the person achieves a strong and powerful concentration his mind is at the threshold of seeing the ultimate nature of reality eventually obtaining release from all suffering important components of buddhist meditation frequently discussed by the buddh are the successively higher meditative states known as the four jhanas which is the language of the eightfold path points out to right concentration when we talk about right concentration or samadhi we see that there are two kinds of samadhi one is after one leaves this world the state of mind of the person is forever in ecstasy and in heavenly bliss this other type is a milder state of ecstasy that one can experience every day through meditation or any other type of ritual we have on one hand when we talk about two types of samadhi we have the one samadhi when the person leaves this world the state of mind of the person is forever in ecstasy and in heavenly bliss and the other type is milder state 
of ecstasy that one can experience every day through meditation or any other type of ritual when we talking about concentration or samadhi we are pointing out to one pointedness of the mind the control of the sense organs and in this type of control after you have a strong control over the things around you in your actions speech and thoughts you have a control on everything around you in every action that is being performed by you samadhi that come out with metta bhavna are of three types of concentration we have parikam samadhi which means preliminary concentration then we have upchar samadhi which means access concentration and in the end or the third type we have apan apana samadhi which means fixed concentration so all that you need to understand when we talking about samadhi is that these are different levels of concentrating on an object and of having a control over your senses and that is what is required when we talk about one pointedness and that is the main way to reach the higher truth which is nirvana now we've talked about sheen we have talked about samadhi in the end we are going to talk about pragya pragya we have already discussed pragya as a key note on in module number 15 so we are going to repeat this again for your better understanding pragya in sanskrit is the sixth of the six paramitas in the buddhist concept in following the bodhisattva path it is referred to as wisdom or and understanding that is able to extinguish afflictions and bring about enlightenment simply stated it is the field of pure consciousness which is beyond concepts beliefs and imagination pragya or wisdom is not an ordinary wisdom when the word wisdom is taken we understand it can not be expressed the fully extent or the fully extent of the meaning of word pragya we see that there are three kinds of pragyas one the mahayans believe to be the first to effectively conceptualize the term pragya there are three levels pragya is related to the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness so that is contemplation of the body feelings minds and mental objects this pragya of mindfulness is a three stage process of development in the path of buddhism pragya of listening pragya of contemplating and pragya of meditation the first stage pragya of listening or studying the dharm is totally dependent on conceptual mind on communication language and form in this stage of hearing listening or studying one is believed to develop the pragya of understanding then comes the second stage pragya of contemplating which is what a person goes through the process of internalizing that received knowledge and understanding in this stage one is believed to have completely absorbed and understood buddh's teachings that one becomes a living reference to his teachings the third and the final state is the pragya of meditation which is marked by the development of realization also known as the state of resting meditation one is believed to go beyond conceptual meditation and rest in the actual state of non dual experience 
This is considered as the realization of the genuine pragya or realization which helps in the development of mindfulness and thus finally the development of states of awareness. According to Sut Satipatthan, are the Buddha's teachings on the four foundations of mindfulness for attaining purity, overcoming suffering and the realization of Nirvana. When we talk about Shil, Samadhi, Pragya, we see that when there is morality, then there is right mindfulness. And when there is right mindfulness, along with morality, we have Pragya, that is wisdom. This wisdom leads to the attainment of higher truth and that is Nirvat, the state of Nirvana. So, morality and Pragya along with ignorance removed from them leads to the higher attainment. Shil, Samadhi, Pragya are equally important just like any other philosophical or ethical teachings of Buddha in order to attain that higher truth and in order to be moving on the virtuous path. When we talk about Sheen, we see that talking about morality, we have right knowledge which is Pragya or wisdom and along with Samadhi which is right concentration, they move along with she. When we talk about Samadhi, we have the other two moving along with it. And then when we have Pragya, we see that we have she and concentration or mindfulness, which is known as Samadhi, that moves along with Pragya. These three together are the most essential components of a Bodhisattva path. If we look at it, they belong to Paramita, which is to be followed by a Bodhisattva when he is attaining Nirvana or when he is on the path to attain Nirvana. So while talking about Shil, Samadhi and Pragya, we need to realize that it has to be understood thoroughly in order to reach on that path where we would be practicing these three precepts of existence. Now, here we've had a good understanding of what Shil, Samadhi and Pragya means, how they constitute the entire Noble Eightfold Path. If you remember, then in the Four Truths or Four Noble Truths, we see that the fourth one talks about the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. Cessation of suffering is the state of Nirvana and the path that leads to the cessation of suffering is also known as Arya Ashtangik Mark. Arya Ashtangik Mark points out to the Noble Eightfold Path where an individual practices eight path or precepts in order to reach the higher truth. Now, if you look at Shil Samadhi Pragya, you see that these noble eightfold path, which characterize the way to attain liberation, can be summed up into these three categories of Shil, Samadhi and Pragya. So, do you realize how important these three categories are in order to understand the teachings of Buddhism? or the ethical as well as the philosophical aspect of Buddha's knowledge or way of living. So the compromising or com compri compromising with everyday life is required when we talk about these three together. An understanding of them needs to be there present when we move on to this path where we are attaining enlightenment. So, Chil Samadhi Pragya formulate an important concept of Buddhism and they need to be understood in accordance or in relationship with Four Noble Eightfold Path and Four Noble Truth.
This is the doctrine of Shin Samadhi, Pragya. Thank you.